Hey everyone, Scott Magoon here coming to you from my studio. Coming up this week, it's Granny Gomez and Jigsaw by Deborah Underwood and me. Best-selling author Deborah will join me from California to read our book and introduce us to her new and special quarantine friend. I'll show you how to draw a piglet, plus we'll take a look at your artwork. It's all ahead. Hey, welcome to the studio. It's story time. This week's book is Granny Gomez and Jigsaw. Granny Gomez is a bit lonely, so her friend William thinks big, really big, as in a really big pig named Jigsaw. Jigsaw is the perfect housemate. They eat watermelon and do puzzles together. But when beloved Jigsaw becomes much too big on the little stairs, Granny needs a big solution. How will they put all the pieces together? Let's find out. It's going to be read for us today by the author, New York Times bestselling author, Deborah Underwood. Deborah, take it away. Granny Gomez and Jigsaw, written by Deborah Underwood, illustrated by Scott Magoon. Granny Gomez lived in a big old house in the country. Granny liked her big house. It had lots of room for her potted plants, her drums, her mountain climbing gear, and her jigsaw puzzles. But sometimes Granny was lonely. Maybe I will get a cat, she said to her petunias. The petunias didn't say anything. They never did. Maybe I will get a dog, she said to her pot of tulips. The tulips didn't say anything either. One day, Granny's friend William came by for tea. Granny told him about her plan to get a cat or a dog. Cats and dogs are nice, but they are not very special, William said. You need a special pet. Like what? Granny asked. I have an idea, said William. The next day, Granny's doorbell rang. Ding dong! There was a basket on her porch. A blanket covered the basket. The blanket moved. Goodness, Granny said. I wonder if it's a baby. She peeked under the blanket. It was a baby. A baby pig. Granny marched over to William's house. Pigs belong in barns, not houses, said Granny. You will have to take this little pig back. William sighed. All right, but I will have to take it back to Farmer Brown. He raises pigs for bacon. Bacon? You mean this little pig will be somebody's breakfast? Granny asked. Granny looked at the pig's little pink nose. She looked at the pig's little pink ears. She looked at the pig's little pink tummy. The pig looked back at her with soft brown eyes. Granny made up her mind. No one is eating this pig. Granny took the pig home. She carried him up the back stairs. Pigs are not very good with stairs. The pig was good company for Granny. They both liked cooking shows. They both liked watermelon. And they both liked jigsaw puzzles. Whenever a piece fell off the table, the pig scooted it over to Granny's feet. I think I will name you Jigsaw, said Granny. Having a pig in the house was not always easy. And as Jigsaw got bigger, Granny's problems got bigger too. A little pig couldn't bite Granny's skis in two, but a big pig could. A little pig couldn't get stuck in Granny's kitchen cupboard, but a big pig could. A little pig couldn't poke his head through Granny's bass drum, but a big pig could. Each day, Granny carried Jigsaw down the stairs so they could walk in the park. Then she carried Jigsaw up the stairs so they could go inside and drink lemonade. My goodness, said Granny one day, you are getting big, Jigsaw. My goodness, panted Granny the next week. You are getting even bigger. 
My goodness, gasped Granny the next week. You are getting crash! Granny and Jigsaw fell through the stairs. Granny looked at Jigsaw. Jigsaw looked at Granny. I think it's time to build you a nice barn, Granny said. Granny drove her truck to Mrs. Green's hardware store. Jigsaw rode in the front seat. Granny bought lots of wood, lots of nails, and barn building for beginners. Granny piled the wood in her yard and got right to work. William helped. Jigsaw helped too. He ate sandwiches with Granny when she stopped for lunch. He drank lemonade with Granny when she took a break. He ate cookies with Granny when she was done for the day. Jigsaw helped so much that he got even bigger. Granny put a kitchen in the barn so Jigsaw could have snacks. She put shelves in the barn for puzzles. She put a TV in the barn so Jigsaw could watch cooking shows. Finally, the barn was finished. It was as nice as Granny's house. Jigsaw snuggled into a pile of straw. He waited for Granny to snuggle into a pile of straw, too. But she didn't. Now we each have a place to live, Granny said. Jigsaw blinked. Good night, Jigsaw. I will see you tomorrow. Granny went outside. Jigsaw followed her. No, Jigsaw, she said. You stay here. Jigsaw walked slowly back to the barn. Granny walked slowly back to the house. She had been very busy building the barn. She hadn't realized how much she would miss Jigsaw until now. Granny went inside. The house felt empty. She did a jigsaw puzzle. When a piece fell on the floor, no one scooted it back to her. She ate watermelon, but it didn't taste right. She watched Bailey bake crazy cakes, but it was no fun without jigsaw. Granny looked out at the barn. She thought and thought. Then she had an idea. She packed her suitcase. She tucked her camping bed under her arm. She picked up her favorite chair. Then she went out to the barn. Jigsaw was waiting for her. The end. I hope you like that. You know, I often wondered how Deborah came up with the idea for a granny and a pet pig. So I asked her recently in a segment called Just One Thing. Let's take a look. Joining us here in the studio via Zoom, all the way from California, is New York Times best-selling author Deborah Underwood. Deborah, welcome to the Studio Storytime. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. I'm so excited to be here with you this morning. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to have you here. We've known each other for years and years, but we've never actually met until this uh, talk. It's so great to meet you. It's wonderful to meet you too. I can't believe it. It's been 10 years since our book came out and more than 10 years since we were working on it. And we've never even spoken in person or in Zoom. So uh, Outrageous, but outrageous. And, but it's common in this industry for authors and illustrators to uh, work on a, on a project together uh, and, um, and never meet, much less uh, communicate via emails or calls. <laughs> So I'm so glad this has worked out. Let's jump to our just one thing. Um, you have, gosh, you have written many amazing, wonderful books. I have been a fan for many years. Um, the, and they range in topics and characters. I mean, you've got pandas, you've got ballerinas, ducks. You've written a lovely book about moving um, that I loved so much. Um, an, an interstellar mechanic. <laughs> How did you come to write about Granny Gomez and Jigsaw the Pig? Jigsaw the Pig. Well, you, you can probably tell from many of my books that I really love animals. And when I go to schools, kids will often ask where I get ideas. I'm sure they ask you the same thing. And, and I tell them you can get ideas anywhere, but a really good place to get ideas is from real life. And that's where Granny Gomez and Jigsaw came from because I have a 
friend who knew that I loved animals. And so this friend gave me a really cool birthday present. So I always ask kids what they think I got. And a lot of them will say a cat because they know I love cats or a book. And then I say, no, it was a pig. And the pig was named Babe after the pig in the movie. And the pig did not live with me in my tiny little apartment in San Francisco. The pig actually lived at this farm sanctuary a couple hours north of the city where they took really, really great care of her. And I got to go visit her anytime I wanted, which was so awesome. And I had never really gotten to know a pig before or a cow or a goat or, or any of the animals they have up there because I live in the city. And I learned so many cool things about pigs. One thing is I learned they like apples. There's a picture of her eating an apple. And she would always get very excited when I gave her an apple to eat. And she liked watermelon, which is why watermelon appears in Granny Gomez and Jigsaw. And pigs love having their tummies rubbed. So if you start petting their side, they'll roll over <laughs> so you can get to their tummy and give them some tummy pets. But I think the thing that impressed me most about her was that, um, that pigs really form very close friendships. So Babe had a friend named Tracy. And every time I went to visit her in the barn, she and Tracy were together. So if, if I knew which pig babe was, I knew the one next to her was Tracy because they were just like, you know, like, like we have best friends or friends that we like hanging out with. And it was fun to be up there and have them say, okay, those two were friends and those two were friends and those two cows are friends. So that just impressed me so much. And I thought it would be fun to write a story about a pig who has a best friend, but in this case, the pig's best friend is a woman named Granny Gomez. So that was the original idea. It sounds like Babe had a great uh, time while he was with us, had a bunch yeah. of friends, had you. Gosh, what a lucky, what, what a lucky pig. So it's just been a near and dear book uh, to my heart all these years. And I think it is, it sounds like it has been for you as well. Oh, absolutely. It was my very first picture book and you did such a wonderful job with the illustrations. I'm just so thrilled that we got to work together on my, what well, was my very first picture book. So thank you for I everything. Feel same you way. I feel the same way. You're so welcome. Thank you. What can you tell us about your upcoming books? You must have some in the works, some that's come out recently. Um, all of your books are so uh, beautiful. Uh, tell us about it. So, so the book that just came out is called Outside In, and it has just beautiful illustrations by Cindy Derby. And the basic idea is that nature is a part of us, even though we are inside sometimes and sometimes don't pay attention to it. And it's been so strange to have that come out in this time when so many of us are staying inside and feeling more disconnected from nature than we were before. Um, as I was telling you before we started recording, there's this park that I love and I can't get to anymore and it makes me so sad. So I think we're trying to find ways to bring nature inside. But this book just talks about how even though we sometimes forget about the outside world, it's really a part of us all the time. I mean, the, the bench I'm sitting on now was a tree. The muffin that I just ate was made from carrots that were growing in the ground. And we really are sort of surrounded by outside even when we're inside and the book just sort of speaks to our um our connection to it and and i think we're all kind of finding ways to bring outside inside in these times when we can't be out there as much in fact i have a new friend would you like to meet my friend absolutely i'm so excited about this it was my birthday it was my birthday last saturday it's not Happy a pig <laughs> it was my so last sunday oh my and goodness. my friend i don't know can you see this is Pitter Patter the Caterpillar. Can That's you see? Amazing. I can see <laughs> Pitter Patter, Patter the Caterpillar. Pitter Patter the Caterpillar. I hope you can kind of get I a can little. See? Oh my gosh! I know. I'm Pitter so excited. So Do we Pitter know what kind of what kind of caterpillar yeah. it is and what kind of what it really is. She's going to be an anise swallowtail butterfly. And she just molted yesterday, which was so exciting because she was black with a little white stripe. And then I went in a couple hours later and there was this old skin and there was this new caterpillar and it was oh, like, wow. ah! <laughs> so That's I'm so excited. cool. Yeah. So That's she just so feels cool. like a really good little quarantine. Uh, pet. Way to go, Peter Patter. Well, Outside In sounds amazing, not to change the subject too much, but I, I don't know, I don't want to get away from it because it sounds so timely. It really is. And I know I sent you a picture of the cover, but I'm just going to show you That's sort beautiful. of. Um, oh, it is gorgeous. It's it just, it's stunning. It's just uh, 
stunning, stunning illustration. Oh so I know I just, one of my favorite ones is uh, this spread. Actually, there's a butterfly in oh, it. That's, that's familiar, right? <laughs> and uh, since I love animals, this spread. Oh, wow. Isn't it gorgeous? It says we feel hard. outside in the warm weight of our cats and the rough fur of our dogs. And I mean, isn't that just stunning? I just, it's just gorgeous. Your words <laughs> and the illustration as well. I love this book. And can you, I'm sorry, can you tell us the illustrator again? Yes, her name is Cindy Derby and she just did just out of the park, gorgeous, stunning job. So I'm oh, so gosh. thrilled. Uh, where can people learn more about these books that you've done and more about you? So yeah, my website is deborahunderwoodbooks.com and, um, and I'm on Twitter very irregularly at at Underwood Writer, so, um, and Instagram at Underwood Writer too, which is often where I'll show or share pictures of animals and things. Right. So. I'll be sure to put all that information in the show notes so people can easily link to you and uh, learn more about your books and your work and um, all that good stuff. Deborah, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, I hope all is well out there in California. And uh, I look forward to, to speaking with you again soon. And let's not let uh, another uh, 10, 10 years go by before we no, talk. No, let's not. Thank you so much, Scott. This has been so much fun. And it's been great to finally meet you. Thanks so much. And we, you take care, all right? All right, you too. Stay safe. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thanks again for joining us, Deborah. It was great to see you. So what do you think? Do you want to draw a baby pig, a piglet, a baby jigsaw together? All right, yeah, let's give it a go. This week though, I'm gonna try something a little different. In shows past, I've drawn on paper using markers and pencils and so on. This week, I'm gonna try drawing using something, a different type of tool entirely, digital tools, an iPad. All of my drawings are done on a computer. I don't use paint, I don't use pencils. I use pixels, I draw with light on an iPad, just like this one. And I'm gonna show you how that happens I'm gonna use my iPad, I'm gonna use this Apple Pencil. You can use a marker, crayons, pens, whatever you use uh, at home, or you can draw along with me if you have an iPad um, as well, or an iPhone, or any uh, drawing tablet will do. Uh, but at the end, I think we're all gonna wind up with a really cute baby piglet drawing together. Uh, here are the colors you need, I'll put those up on the screen so you can see exactly what colors we're going to use as we go on with our drawing. Um, let's, um, let's, let's take a look. We're going to switch over now to my uh, iPad view and we're going to pick up there. Okay, here it goes. All right, here we are in Procreate. I use this app to draw my picture books and I'm also using it to work on my first graphic novel. I love this app. It's about $9 or $10 in the App Store. Tons and tons of features, but if you just want to doodle, it's great for that as well. So let's doodle Jigsaw, baby Jigsaw today. I'm going to use my um, special Apple Pencil that I showed you, and I'm gonna draw a nice big circle right in the middle. So pick your um, pink coloring tool, whatever it may be, and make a nice big circle like this. And if I go too fast, please just pause the video and catch up. I will be here waiting for you. Next, we're going to draw another circle for Jigsaw's head, and that's gonna be like right up in here right up in this area about that size, okay? Just like that. Next, I'm gonna draw a circle out here for Jigsaw's nose, just like this. Next, we're gonna draw just a slightly triangular shape up here. Okay, that's gonna be Jigsaw's ear. And another ear for Jigsaw over here, okay? Just like this. Looking good. I hope yours is too. I'm sure it is. Okay, next we're going to kind of connect the bottom of Jigsaw's um, nose to her chin. And we're going to kind of do this a little bit. Kind of come down like that. Okay, see that? How it forms a nice little smooth shape. It looks like a giant comma almost. See how that lines up like that? Good. We're going to draw our legs next. We're going to come down like this and just make a couple more triangles kind of like we did for the ears, only we're, we're turning them around this way. There's one here. There's one kind of towards the middle of that oval that we drew earlier, just like this. Okay, good. And then back here, we're gonna draw two more. Of course, she has four chubby little legs that come to a hoof. We'll do the hoofs soon. Stay tuned for the hoofs. We're gonna hoof it. Okay. 
I hope yours is looking pretty good. Um, next we're going to, well, let's see, let, maybe we can start adding some, some lines. Okay. So now it's time for your black marker. I'm going to pick from one of my 16 million colors and I'm going to change my drawing tool to something like a marker. Okay. So like a black marker, you can also use a black crayon that should work as well, depending on what you used for your, um, jigsaw color and we're going to put her eye his eye pretty much right in the center there um whoops it's really small the center there like this okay like that and then just below the other ear we're going to do another eye like this okay jigsaw can be looking anywhere you want i have jigsaw kind of looking to the right and let's draw her nose we're going to put two dots just like this, like that. You can draw the mouth anywhere you like. A couple spots will work. I'm going to show you a couple spots, but just wait until I finish showing you where they could go before you draw yours. Okay. You could draw your smile here. Undo that. You could draw your smile here. If you want, you could draw your smile here like this. Right? There's a couple of spots that work on a pig's face. I think I'm going to put mine right here below the snout, even though that's not quite how pig smiles work. I think it's really cute and it's my art. So I'm going to make it how I want and you can do it however you want. All right. We're putting some eyebrows. I love eyebrows. She's got, he's got some bushy eyebrows there like that. Next we're going to do jigsaw's hooves. And for that, we're just going to do a W, a W, a W. A w and then we're going to draw a line over the top of the w's just like this okay and then we can color them in just like that good that's pretty easy right yeah okay next we're going to draw jigsaw's tail i'm going to take my pink marker again and i'm going to go off to the back of jigsaw jigsaw's bum and do a little squirrely curly cue like that so we've got jigsaw's tail happening very cute um, I'm also going to start to add some grass. So I'm going to take my green marker and let's add some grass down here. I'm just going to do some nice strokes like this all along the bottom. So it looks like Jigsaw is standing in the grass. Keep it simple. Keep it fun. Keep it light. Keep it suggestive. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? But Jigsaw's up for a nice walk in the dewy grass. Okay. We're going to draw some flowers next. How about just a couple of stems like this? We'll do one there like that. We'll do one amp here in the, on the other side like that. I'm going to move my drawing over a little bit and we'll do a stem like that as well. Feel free to add as many as you want. Um, I'm going to pick my yellow brush and I'm just going to make some nice flowers just like this. Start with an X cross the X like this. Okay. Just very stylized, very simple flowers. And they're just del deliverers of color in my picture at this point. Right? Very simple. I'm going to add the centers of our flowers like this. Using our orange marker or color. Good. How's yours looking? Good. I hope you can send in your drawings. I would love to see them. Send them in. And we'll show them on a future show. All right, let's draw some watermelon. As we saw in the story, Jigsaw loves watermelon. For that, how about Jigsaw is balancing it right on his nose like this, his snout like that. And we're going to draw like a C shape just like this. Okay, see that? That's going to be the rind, the outside of the watermelon. Then I'm going to pick my red and... I'm just going to fill this in just like this, just like that. We've got our watermelon happening. Next, of course, we have to add the seeds. And I know we have seedless watermelon now, but there's just something iconic about watermelon with seeds in it. It just reads really well as uh, watermelon. Now, if you have it, it'd be really cool if you took your white chalk or light colored chalk um, so we can add some highlights here and there. 
I'm going to just kind of do this on her like that. On the top of her ears like this, on top of her head. Just to give it a little, a little light like that. And if you have a pencil, you can take your pencil or charcoal even and add some shading down underneath like that if you want, not necessary. So your belly, how I'm adding a little shading down there, looks a little more three-dimensional, a little bit. Good. All right, what else can we do? I think we need to sign it. I'm going to sign mine in the lower right, just like I always do like this. And there's our pig drawing. I'd love to see it. Send in yours. And um, we, I'd love to feature it on a future show. I'm going to add a little sky up here, just a hint of sky using my crayon tool, just like that. And uh, there you go. There's our little jigsaw drawing. Thanks for joining me. I hope you can try digital drawing sometime. It's really fun. I want to show you one more cool trick about this app. If you tap up here on the wrench and you go to time-lapse replay, see where it says time-lapse replay? It's the very first line of text there. If you tap that, it shows your whole drawing from beginning to end as a quick time movie, as like an, a time-lapse movie. And if you take your finger across the top on that blue line, you can kind of rewind it, fast forward it, jump forward and backwards, pause it. It really reminds me of all the different strokes and, and uh, steps that I took in, in making my drawing. So that when I go to my next drawing, I'll be reminded, oh yeah, that drawing I really liked last time, it didn't just happen. There was a lot of steps involved. It took me a lot of time. Um, it's a great tool. I love the time-lapse replay. You can email these to your friends and family as well. Uh, post them to um, social media. It's a really neat extension of the Procreate app. That's it. Thanks, everybody. Send in those pigs. In fact, if you happen to create your pig on Procreate, send me your time lapse, and I'd love to show everyone your time lapse video and how you created your drawing. Great. I hope you liked that. It was a little different, a little uh, outside of what we usually do, but I'd love to see your pig drawings. Speaking of drawings, let's take a look at the drawings you've sent in from, from previous weeks. I think you like them. Here's a look. Many, many illustrations to check out this week, so let's jump right in. We've got a Bigfoot drawing from episode one. Look at this awesome Bigfoot. The eyebrows are where it's at. The eyes are where it's at. Great stuff here. I really like uh, this gigantic Bigfoot drawing. Um, and I love that you did it on a huge piece of paper, which meant your whole arm was engaged and your whole wrist. Uh, sometimes when we draw very small on a piece of paper or an iPad, um, we use a lot of just, you know, small hand motions, but this must have been a whole arm effort. Great job. Thanks for sending that in. We're moving on now to the mostly monsterly section of our, of our viewer art. Uh, this monster was created with the mostly monsterly monster maker. Um, We've got the triangle-shaped body, a slime-covered body, uh, circles for circle shape for legs, scales, uh, six horns, four eyes, five teeth, four arms. Awesome, great stuff. Thank you for sending in uh, that drawing. Great job with that monster. We've got look at this. We've got this monster. Joggy is its name. Also has a triangular-shaped uh, body. It looks like it's covered with slime and many many eyes. This uh, artist also created. Uh, his own Monster Maker card. I'm also told that this author is in Mumbai, India. So hello from America to India. It looks like you are keeping busy making excellent artwork. Thanks for sending that in and be well there in India. Look at this monkey and owl drawing. I love it. A uh, couple different types of balloon. Looks like one has maybe a monster on it. Another one has maybe Mickey Mouse inside of it. But I love the monkey too. Lots of energy there as monkey makes its way across the page. And owl is lovely as well. Excellent work. Thank you so much for sending that in. I really appreciate that. Great job. We've got this owl and monkey as well. Look at monkey leaping into the air as if to grab that balloon and owl saying, all right, all right, you can have it, monkey. Excellent job. Thanks for sending that in. I love it. Keep them coming. We've got more owl and monkeys. Here we've got owl and monkey standing on their tree. It looks like monkey's kind of whispering something in, in owl's ear. Maybe, hey, can I have that balloon? It looks great. 
Nice job. Thank you for sending that in. We've got this dragon now. We're moving on to I Will Not Eat You and Theodore the Dragon. Love this dragon. The scales are awesome. The big powerful tail with all the spikes. Nice job with the flames as well. And the cave too. Excellent work. Thanks for sending that in. I appreciate that. We've got a rover. Our first rover in from last week's episode uh, in in Rover Throws a Party. And uh, great job. This was a challenging drawing. Lots of uh, shapes and angles and three-dimensional uh, aspects to it. So nice work. Good job sticking with it. Came out really nicely. We've got another Rover here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you can see that she's got some really nice three-dimensional stuff going on too, especially with the wheels and the body of Rover. Nice job. Thank you so much for sending that in. I love the orange-red. Um, really nice uh, Mars effect. We have this Mars rover from the author of Rover Throws a Party. Kristen L. Gray sent this in to us from Arkansas, and she did a great job as well uh, on her whiteboard. Nice job. Thank you, Kristen, for sending that in. Really appreciate that. Of course, no drawing segment, viewer drawing segment, uh, would be complete without my uh, super fan. Uh, my super fan has sent in his Mars rover and it is tremendous just like all of his drawings uh, great job with this you can really see the molly you know the um, extendable arm uh, attachment kind of coming out there in front and uh, the rover is looking very determined um, nice work of uh, mixing the light areas of the rover with the darker areas um, it's just a nice fun energetic um, drawing that's it, that tells me a rover is moving through the landscape it works great job thank you so much thanks everybody for sending in your artwork if you have artwork you'd like to share it with us please send it in we would love to see it i'll put it up on the screen and we can enjoy it in a future episode thanks everybody well, that's all the time we have for this episode of the story time. Thanks for being there. Please like and subscribe. Ring that notification bell. It lets me know you care. You can all find all of my Scott Studio Storytime episodes on my website at scottmagoon.com. Tons more about my books there as well. Teacher's guides, activities, and so on and so forth. Check that out. We're going to put up new episodes every Wednesday. We're getting down there though. We're only got a few episodes left. Um, please check them out and tell your friends that uh, they'll be up there uh, to, for, you to, for you to view. Um, that's it, everybody. Uh, take care for now. Uh, I'll see you next time from the studio. In the meantime, stay safe, healthy, wash those hands, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care.